Hello, this is Gal, my girl and her librarian. Thank you for joining me for this little chat about an author called James Herbert. In 2013, we lost the author James Herbert. Probably one of the most beautiful horror writers there's ever been. Now I know that names like Stephen King, Lumley, Kuntz, Lovecraft even, have been bandied about a lot about being the best horror writer. But James Herbert had, for me anyway, a gift. One of my favourite books of all time was a James Herbert book, and it's hard because there's multiple of these books that I loved, but Sepulchre was extraordinary. It's the kind of book that it's not too short, not too long, sucks you in, takes you into a a world where you completely and utterly believe everything that's going on and then you're not sure what you're seeing or what's happening. Now I know that the Rats series, uh, and you've got number four which is the city, uh, you have the Rats is the first one, and then you've got uh, Domain, which is the third one, which is one of my favourites as well. Lair, the second Rats, was, yeah, that was a very, very good book. One that doesn't get mentioned very often is The Spear. Now, The Spear was about Nazis looking for a cult kind of, I guess you'd call it paraphernalia. They were looking for the spear that pierced Christ's side. They wanted to use it as a weapon. Now, it's no secret that, well, there's a rumour that the Nazis, including Himmler, had quite a thing for the occult. And I mean, this book was written before Indiana Jones, but that kind of thing where, you know, the SS is looking for these weapons, basically. And so you have an adventure wrapped up in a horror, wrapped up in a, you know, what if these things were real? What if, you know, they'd actually gotten their hands on this and it was real? I mean, whether you believe or not, you can still kind of buy into that. You know, what if they did find this, that or the other? Creed, The Survivor, 48. Portent and The Jonah, all incredible stories by Herbert. And I would suggest that you start with The Rats and then move on to Sepulchre and The Creed. Yeah, and all of The Rats. <laughs> James Herbert is one of those writers that has a gift for description. He has a gift for giving you enough space to decide and kind of build the world in your head. It's that very fine balancing act between what is said and what isn't said that allows you to kind of bring them together. There's a fluidity about his writing that I always adored. Sometimes I think writers make you work too hard for a story. If you're reading fiction, then there's a very fine line between enjoying something and working hard for it. If you have to work really, really hard, then I think it takes away some of the enjoyment. But then you want the space to be able to take in complex themes, to enjoy kind of rolling those around your head and coming to the conclusions rightly or wrongly before the conclusion of the book to see if you were right basically and so it's very hard to know which of Herbert's you should read first I'd say just all of them his approach is dark it's sometimes claustrophobic, it's sometimes unbelievable, but always, always chilling. His way of writing, his way of keeping you on the edge of your seat without drawing a story out too long is incredibly impressive. You know those books you've read where you're three quarters of the way through and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and you're getting a bit bored because you don't really care what happens now. 
But you're going to read the rest of it anyway, because damn it, I started this thing, I'm going to finish it. (laughs) But then you get stuck. You get stuck with too much information, too much superfluous rubbish. You don't get that with Herbert. The way that he writes dialogue, the way that he writes description, the way that he opens a story and it's almost like a hook that catches you and then just pulls you in slowly, slowly, slowly until you're reading at three o'clock in the morning because you want to finish this damn book because it's so good. And then you're scrabbling around for something else of Herbert's to, to read. Sadly, with James Herbert, what's written is written. There's not going to be any more new books. We lost a titan of horror when we lost James Herbert. And it saddens me greatly that I will never get to read a new book by him. There are writers that write as a job and you can tell it. There are others that write for the love of it and for the love of telling stories. And I always found that that was James Herbert, that he wrote because he was so in love with storytelling, that that's what he did. And so I'm going to leave you with the thought that, could you imagine diving into a world of rats? (laughs) diving into a world of a house where you're a bodyguard looking after somebody and strange things start to happen. Read the rats, read Sepulchre, read the spear, read the survivor, Creed, Nobody's True, all of them, read all of his works. Read them in any order you wish, just read them because they are superb. And they hark back to a time when horror writers really, really knew their craft and knew how to build a story and to bring you something fantastical that you'd not heard before. I'm going to let Mute Errant play us out with the wonderful piece of music he made for me for this series. I'm going to say please, please like, comment and subscribe. If you have any tales of James Herbert books or any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, you're never safe in the dark. (laughs) Thank you for listening. I've been Girl. I'm a girl and her librarian.